action. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Maker Mastermind Show, your weekly vlogcast. I'm your host, Larissa Lewis from the Indie Business Network. It is our sixth episode in seven, including our first book club last week, and we really can't be more excited to be here. I'm sure everyone is fully engrossed in building a story brand. I know I am. If you didn't know, it is the featured book this month of Indie Business Book, Vinny Indie Business Book Club. If you haven't checked it out yet, you must. It's a super fun way to connect with fellow makers, read an excellent business training book, and bonus, you get to see book club host and fellow small business owner, Amber Malcolm's bright smile and hear her excellent and thoughtful insights. She will be back next week at the same time discussing chapters two and three, uh, one of which shares the top secret weapon that will grow your business, and I'm sure it will. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, you're totally missing out because this book is one of my absolute favorites. So check out the link in the comments section and you can see how to get how to join in on the book club fun. Um, so let's get Donna Maria here today. Let's see what she's up to. How are you, Donna Maria? I'm here and I'm up to uh, this in the Bindi Business Book Club. <laughs> how was your weekend? My weekend was good. I spent it uh, in Richmond, Virginia at the Redskins training camp watching my son play football. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yes. And of course, yesterday was Mother's Day. Happy belated Mother Day, Mother's Day to all the moms. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. What, did you do anything special for Mother's Day other than be able to go to NFL training camp? Um, I walked up and down the field. I ran up and down the field. I chased my son with a camera up and down the field. And I got rained on on the field. Oh. And um, a couple times I got downwind of all the players. <laughs> and we were all leaving. We were leaving in a big clump. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to move over here. Ooh, so um, cool. but it was such an adventure to watch him and to see all these guys. I mean, these guys are excited about football. And they, yeah. they have such a camaraderie amongst themselves. They encourage each other. You know, they dance and they, you know, get all excited when they score. And it's really, you know, I'm old enough to say it's cute. You know, they're both <laughs> grown men, though. But um, anyway, it was fun. And it was, you know, such a joy to be able to have the ability to let my son go and play at a professional team's training camp. Yeah, so, that's really cool. Yeah, that was really neat. And he, of course, enjoyed that. So it was it's, it was great. How about, you? How about you? Oh, you know. Um, got got it more into building a story brand. <laughs> okay, all right. Weekend. Yes. Well, I hope everybody listening had a super weekend. And um, as Larissa was introducing um, the the top secret weapon, I was thinking, don't ask me for the top <laughs> secret weapon because I haven't read that far. <laughs> and, oh no, uh, it's the yeah, title so. of the upcoming sessions. I wasn't going to quiz you on it. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, ask me like next week or whatever, but. Uh, <laughs> But actually, ask Amber because Amber, um, Amber Huffman Malcolm from Shabby Chick Cleaners, is doing a fantastic job of leading the book club. So Thank make you. sure you visit her website. Um, Jennifer will post a link below. Um, she is not just any entrepreneur. Like she said, she won the Oklahoma Small Business Entrepreneur Award. So now she's moving on to the national competition. So oh, wow. Amber has got it together. So she's a great person to read a book with, a great person to be mentored by, and I highly encourage you to tune in. That's terrific. Um, okay, so as you all know, like with every show, Donna Maria has no idea what the question of the week is. <laughs> she's so great at the style of extemporaneous entrepreneur training, so I'm really happy we're able to tap into it on this show. So let's get to today's topic. Uh, now, Don and Maria, you know, business is full of ebbs and flows. And, you know, sometimes in that dang ebb, <laughs> yeah, the dang ebb. Time, <laughs> dang ebb, we all have those times when we feel stuck or have hit the wall. Um, in the Private Indie Business Network group, you're constantly fielding questions on this. Uh, what are your top four marketing strategies and tips to give business a boost when you might be in one of these dang ebbs? <laughs> Okay, the dang ebb, all right. Um, okay, if you're in an ebb, 
and, and let me just make sure I know what you mean. You mean like it's a slow period, right? Like the sales yes. are not blowing in like they always do. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. So this is an opportunity to tweak as much as you can tweak. That's essentially what it is. Like there's always something that you need to fix or tweak or fine tune, right? And when it's really super busy in your business, you don't have time to do that. So this is a great time to slow down and rejuvenate yourself first, like take some time to treat yourself. So I would say the first thing is to like look at your life and see if you can use it as a chance to take a break. Um, if it's an unplanned ebb, then uh, maybe you can't you know, do something big, but you can certainly do something uh, like maybe spend a half of a day at a spa or have a staycation or a mini vacation. Um, maybe you have some airline points you can use. Um, so take a look at what's going on in your life and see if you could take a deep breath for a bit and like treat yourself because you have an ebb. So you can take advantage of that by getting a little sabbatical rejuvenation. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I would look at your website and see what can be uh, corrected, fixed, tweaked, made better. Um, maybe you need to double check your blog and make sure that you haven't been not blogging for a hundred years. Um, you might want to like put together a blogging schedule. Um, you might check out your website and make sure that all of your product descriptions are up to date and, and as innovative as you can possibly make them. Maybe your product photos can use a little dusting off. Uh, perhaps your blog, what? Yeah, it's an excellent time to take a look at those. It is. Perhaps your bios at your social media can be spruced up or perked up. Sometimes those links get old and you need to kind of go take a look at them. Um, maybe you need to make sure that all the social media links at your website go to the right place. Like I literally was so impressed by, um, I don't even remember where I was uh, last night looking at someone's candles. Awesome. And when I clicked on the social media, it took me to Wix. Wix is Twitter. Wix is Facebook. Wix is, I'm like, ah. Oh. You know, like you have to update those. <laughs> you got to pay attention. Well, not even update. They never were changed from the from the website when it was taken out of the box. So it's really important to do that, because if I if I want to connect with you on Instagram and maybe think about following you, because maybe I'd like to make a purchase someday and it goes to Wix. I'm like, well, is anyone in charge here? Like, I don't want to go to Wix. And before you know it, I've completely forgotten about you. Like I said, I can't even remember whose awesome candles I was looking at. And they were very nicely done, but I don't remember who they were because I couldn't follow. So now I'm not in touch. Um, so spruce up your website. The third thing is check your list building. Go back and check and see what's happening with your opt-ins or however you're gathering emails. Um, is it working? Uh, look at how many you've gotten in the last 30 days, 60 days, maybe the last quarter. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it stagnant? That means you need to build that up because if you have an online business, you're going to want to make sure that you are constantly inviting people into the fold so you can email them, which means you can also convert them into buyers, right? Um, so make sure that you have an up-to-date email list system. And then I would probably say the fourth thing, because you asked for four, um, depending on how long your ebb lasts, this could go on for a while. Um, but the last thing I would say is get on the phone and call some of your best customers. Call them up. Like call them up and then go on Facebook and talk about who you talk to. Um, you know, don't tell everybody it's slow. Just say, you know, today I took a few minutes to give Larissa a call. She has purchased our products um, and her favorite is the sugar scrub here in this scent. And I had a great conversation with her and you might even let Larissa know in advance that you're going to talk about her um, and maybe she'll come and say, hi everyone, I love the sugar scrub. You know, just kind of something easy, but get on the phone and call up some of your best customers and talk to them. I was thinking about you, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just wanted to thank you for your business and let you know how much we appreciate you and see if there's anything that we can do to serve you. And then go tell people what you did. Like put a picture on Instagram. You might even get an unsolicited um, testimonial from that phone call. The person may go, oh, you know, the sugar scrub is the best because this, 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 write it down. And then at the end say, that's a great testimonial. I wasn't looking for it, but can I share it? Of course you can. You called me out of the blue to tell me you appreciate me. 
Like you can do whatever you want, right? So whether it's some of your, whether you have wholesale customers, your retail stores you want to call or your individual consumer customers, make sure that you use your phone. It's a great tool. Use your phone, not just to be posting on Instagram and so forth, but to reach out and develop relationships with the people that matter most. And that's the people who buy your products. So that's four things. I hope that's helpful. Have you guys done any of this? Like, I seriously want to know. I call my members regularly. When I can go see them, I actually do. Like when I'm traveling for business or whatever, I'll say I'm coming there. I did this a couple of weeks ago when I was in Nashville for, um, for some entrepreneurial training. I stopped by two and visited two of my members and bought stuff and had a great time. We took pictures. I helped stir up some things. I was probably more in the way than anything else, but I had a really good time. So I want to encourage you to treat your the people that buy your products with, with that sort of respect and that sort of fun. And they'll remember you and they'll tell their friends. Now, for some makers, summertime is not their highest sales season. But before you know it, summer is over and surprise, <laughs> we're careening towards the big holiday season. So even though that seems far off into the future right now, it's a great time to start preparing for that. So do you have any tips that can be implemented in a low, in a low season to set yourself up to blow the holidays out of the water? Well, I, yeah, I guess the same things. Um, but if you're really talking specifically about the holidays, make sure you have a holiday marketing plan in place. Make sure that your holiday graphics, your holiday promo graphics are done, or there's a plan to do them like on a calendar. Um, do 10 holiday promo graphics this week. Um, also, if you're going to have special limited edition products, like now's the time to be planning those out and putting together a production schedule for them. So, you're not sitting around at the end of October going, ah, what are we going to have for the holidays this year? Um, if you do shows, uh, some people do, some people don't. But if you do, now's the time. Well, it's actually pretty much past time. You might still be able to find some shows, but a lot of them are full now. So you want to make sure that you do that if you haven't done that yet. Um, and then um, if you uh, sell to retail stores, now's the time to start letting them know, like, what's going to be available, when it's going to be available, you know, help them understand how to use any new products that you're going to be offering, give them ideas or even schedules about when to put them out, when to order. Here's when you need to order. Um, we're only making, you know, a thousand of these. We're going to run out fast. So make sure you place your order fast or even early. Like we're accepting pre-orders now in May and June. Like you can do that if they love your products and they know there's only going to be so many of them you are handmade and artisan made, see if you can get some pre-orders and, and, and so forth. Um, and I would also encourage you generally to explore a subscription business model, explore a membership business model, whatever that may be for you. I was having a conversation the other day with someone about this and uh, she has a largely wholesale business. And I was suggesting to her, what could she do to encourage a recurring sales relationship with them? Like, Every month you buy you know, $400 worth of products, we put that on, on shipment for you so you don't have to worry about it. And if you do that every month, we will do additional things for you. Like maybe we'll give you additional shelf talkers or maybe we will um, uh, provide you with some custom graphics that you can use on your social media to promote our products at your store. Um, people, ret a retailer would love that because it takes some of the burden off of them to do some of that stuff themselves. So try to think of ways that you can add value to your customer, your buyer experience and turn them into members instead of just customers and occasional buyers and subscribers. And if you treat them like that, they'll come back. And there's a great uh, body of, of work that's being done now that is showing that the recurring revenue, you know, subscription business model is something that everyone should really take a look at. I'm not saying everyone should do it. Um, you kind of have to be ready, but it is something that everyone, I don't care what kind of business you have, should be exploring in their business. Definitely. Those are great ideas. Um, I love the idea of kind of putting putting together your holiday or it doesn't just have to be for holidays, but promotional kit for your retailers to use um, to promote your products. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're selling to stores, 
the more you can help them sell more products off their shelves, the more they're going to come back to you and order to see you as the Where did we lose her? I think we that. have lost Donna Maria. Oh, there she is. <laughs> they're obviously going to see you as the person that helped them make more money. So yeah. when it's time to make more money, there's a connection there. So uh, they, they might think of you before they think of other people that sell <laughs> similar products. Yeah, great. Um, one resource I wanted to point out that uh, I think it's important for everybody everybody to be taking a look at is um, the Harrow Help a Reporter Out service. Um, this is if, if that's if that's not something you're currently using, it's, this is a great time to start getting used to it and um, receiving the notifications. It's basically a uh, journalists and uh, reporters are part of a big service, and they put out. Uh, you know, calls for various articles and uh, whatnot that they're watching, uh, that they're writing. Um, and some of them are asking for different products, for gift guides. Some of them are asking about different business advice. Um, and then basically, this is a free service. You can receive all of the requests that reporters are looking for. You know, you can submit your product, your business, and end up with a great media feature out of it. And they send these lists out, I don't know, three times a day. <laughs> so there's they definitely not a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Larissa posts them in our private member group too. Um, so you can, um, we, we sort through them and look at the ones that most of our members would be most interested in. And we sort through all the requests for the latest beer and the newest cigar. And we go straight to um, the lifestyle, the jewelry, the candles, the bath and body and so forth. And uh, starting around July is when the holiday roundups really start. Like they yeah. are looking for products to put in their magazines and newsletters and blogs and Instagram and everything else for the holidays. So now is a good time to, to subscribe. H A is it, it's helperreporter.com, right? That's the, uh, yeah, I think the, Jennifer has the link she can put in the comments. Yeah. I think it's helperreporter.com. Helperreporter yeah. Right. And you'll, you'll sign up as a, um, as a source because you're a source. And then um, you'll start getting those emails and you get to pick and choose the categories too. So you don't have to be bombarded and you will be bombarded if you don't pick categories. They send a lot of emails out. So if you have a separate email address from the one you normally use, so you're not pulverized, um, you might want to do that. So you can set aside some time on your calendar, go in and have a look. But if you're a member, we post them, some of them into the group, some of the ones that look like they're most useful and, and interesting for artisans. And so that's an option for you as well. And then we have a member who wrote a book called The Power of Free Publicity. Um, Jennifer will post the link there too. Her name is Roberta Perry. She walks you through step-by-step step how to use Harrow really well. Harrow is help a reporter for short. Help a reporter out, um, Harrow. Um, she walks you through like her tips and tricks and some templates and stuff to help you actually use um, that service really well. So if you're having a downtime now, that's a good thing to spend some time doing as well. Thank you for that. There's number five. <laughs> well, I did have one more thing I wanted to briefly touch on that I've also right. seen some chatter about in the Indie Business Network group. Um, I've seen a lot of people talking about Facebook parties and you've been involved in some conversations about those. Um, can you give us a little idea what those are and how we might be able to better implement those this summer, this summer season? Yes. Um, well, you know, Facebook parties can be a little tricky um, because Facebook's always changing things. So like as soon as you say, do it this way, Facebook changes stuff. Um, but essentially, basically, um, if you have a community for your brand, which I don't recommend that everyone do, but I recommend that everyone check it out and see if you should do it. If you maintain and lead a community for your brand, then you can have virtual events in there just like like we're having now. So you can have a party with a host or you can be the host, um, a party where you bring your, um, your, your customers, your members, your clients, whatever you call them, your favorite people together around your products. And you can obviously post pictures in the products. You can let people know, uh, you know, our party lasts from eight to eight 45 this evening. There's going to be, um, prizes, you can have prizes for people. You can have little mini um, um, hunts on your website for clues and things to win the prizes. 
and it is a lot of fun. If you do these around a theme, like a holiday theme or, you know, summer sizzle, you know, when July gets here, hotter than July, you know, party for our brand or what have you, you gotta be creative, you know, and you gotta be excited about it. You can't just go on oh, having, a, having a Facebook party. No, it's gotta be the best thing since sliced bread. So you wanna get people to come and, um, and have a good time. So you can do it inside the group, um, and that's, that's the way that I've seen it done. That's the way I've done it. That's the way I recommend that it be done. But here's the thing. People will always come to the first one, generally speaking, because they're curious, right? And it's the first one. Like, people go to the first one. But here's what happens. If you don't keep it up and set up a system, they won't come when you go, oh, I think I'll have another party next month, sales are low. That's how it's going to seem to them. Oh, she's back with another party. But if you do it in a way that interests your target audience, okay? And I mean, make it interesting. So for example, when you go to a home party for Tupperware, right? You see all the Tupperware displayed and everything, but you're also eating, okay? Why are people eating? Because that's fun, all right? So why not have, you know, you know your favorite tea, or why not create some sort of a conversation around something that your target customers are interested in that's not your product. So you can have a theme and make it fun. Whatever fits your brand. Everybody has a target audience, right? What are your people most interested in? What turns them on? What makes them happy? Well, you can have a party around that and you can help them with that. Yeah, in definitely. In the context of your brand and then also display your products right there and let them know they're available right now. And I'm here right now to answer all the questions that you have about them. You know what? You can put it on subscription. You don't want to buy the whole eight ounces. You can buy a sample, you know, sell your stuff and, and get it out there. And you know what? We had a masterclass. I think it was last month um, inside the membership with Don Fitch on how to sell when you don't know how to sell. And people are still talking about that because she created yeah. a script a yeah. Then we exactly. all went over to her party and watched her do it. So we were like all taking notes, like how to do it. She does a great job of it. So um, if you're a member and you haven't watched that yet and gotten that download, make sure you do that. But it was, it was just great. And so it takes practice to become good at this stuff. Facebook is not, you know, and it's, Facebook's always changing things. So you kind of have to stay on it. But if you want your sales to be online, and your customers are on Facebook, you owe it to yourself to look at setting up some sort of a branded discussion community where you can meet with your best people. Don't, don't, you can let everyone in if you want to, but if you're smart, you'll kind of make it exclusive. Like the people who are buying the most products get in there. Um, and maybe you let them bring a friend for a party. For a minute, right? So they can come in and have a look at them. Well, you can bring them in. I'm trying to tell you that you need to make it different. Yeah. Like you need to make it different. Make it special. Like, why would I want to be in there? Well, I don't know. Why don't you come? You can bring a friend. Like it's always exclusive when um, you get it. You have to be invited by someone who's already here. Right, you can't just come out of the blue because you find us on Facebook and we're gonna be your 398th group that you join, right? You wanna bring people who are like-minded and who's more like-minded than one of your best customer's friends. They're gonna be like-minded to them. So again, I'm, I'm talking off the top of my head because you kind of have to make up your system. Like you kind of have to try different things and then do what's gonna work work for you. And there's some risk involved in that, but Hey, you're an entrepreneur. So that's what you do. <laughs> Part of the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, it's free, fun. right? It's totally free. Facebook, you can go live on Facebook for free. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Facebook has made it really clear recently that you, um, that it is investing its resources in groups. It's, it's obviously investing far fewer resources in pages. Um, they're still, they still want you to buy ads. We all get those notifications constantly. Um, maybe you buy an ad. Ads are great, okay, when they work. Um, but if they don't work for you, if it's not something that you want to do, um, then you do have other options inside Facebook and also Instagram. You can, you can rinse and repeat it all on the gram. <laughs> you got to be selling. That's the thing is that you got you to gotta be selling. 
those are some tremendous tips. Um, it's impossible to not feel, to, it's impossible to still feel discouraged after hearing those excellent tips if you're experiencing a bit of a low season. But uh, if you are, it's time to suit up and get going on some of these great ideas. Thanks for sharing them, Donna Maria. Thanks for having me, Larissa. She said, suit oh. up. <laughs> suit up. Suit up. Put your clothes on, your big girl panties. As you go out there and get it done. And you know what? If you do have a party, post post the link. Like, let us know. Like, there's over a thousand people here. We'll come check it out and encourage you and lift you up. I might show up because I like stuff like this. I want to see you succeed. So, um, if you're gonna host a party. And with over a thousand people, somebody should be hosting a party at some point. Um, isn't there's another holiday coming up too? Father's Day is right around the corner. Um, it's a good oh, and all the graduations now and weddings. It's wedding season. You know, if you specialize in, you know, we have members that make customized wedding products and so forth. That's the end of May. It might be a little late for that, but you got to plan ahead. But if you do, let us know so we can come check it out. Yeah, let us know. And then also, uh, as usual, put any questions you have down in the, down in the comments and yes. we will get to those. Please and do. Yeah, we will uh, see you all next week. Have a great one. Yes, well, next week um, will be oh. chapters two and three of Story Brand with Amber um, at uh, Shabby Chick Cleaners. That book, it, it, it's good. So it's, it, if you have some ebbs, it's time to read that book, I would say, Definitely. and make sure that you are. Right. Your customers are the heroes, right? Okay, good. Thank you, yes. Larissa. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a great week. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.